Hello there, this is the Shadow Ranger. Um, here just talk about a couple of wrestling topics. Also trying out a new microphone, so I don't know how this is going to sound. So when you watch, listen to this video, kind of leave me a little feedback on, on the sound quality so I kind of get an idea of how this new mic is working. Um, Alright, let's start off with what I learned this week. This week, I learned that you're only considered a WWE reject if you go to TNA. It's totally fine to quickly push the ex-WWE guys to the top and have them beat all the homegrown talent if it happens in ROH. Isn't that interesting? Uh, next, we're going to talk about Today in Wrestling History. Uh, this is brought to you by Gerwick.net. You can hop over to Gerwick.net and listen to Steve Gerwick's recent interview with former TNA uh, talents Roxy and Goldilocks. So let's talk about, let's see what's happened this day in wrestling history, July 3rd. 4th of July, Independence Day for everybody in America tomorrow. Happy Independence Day, everybody in America. I'm American, although I'm living in Korea, but, you know, still proud to be an American, so happy birthday to everybody a little early. Alright, today in wrestling history, 1986, Velvet McIntyre defeats the Fabulous Moolah to win the WWF Women's title. 1995, the Rock and Roll Express, Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson, defeated PG-13, J.C. Ice and Wolfie D, to win the vacant NWA Tag Team titles. In 2001... On the episode of SmackDown, Billy Kidman defeated Shane Helms to win the Cruiserweight title. Uh, 2006, on Raw, Edge defeated John Cena and Rob Van Dam in a triple threat match to win the WWE title. Hmm, not bad. Let's see what else we want to talk about here. Alright, uh, first thing I want to talk about is... <clears throat> Two up and comers in TNA this year, Gunner and Crimson. First of all, I find it very odd that everyone complains and says that TNA needs to find some new guys, build their own talents, bring out some fresh faces. They finally pick two guys that they really, really get behind, and yet I still hear people complaining. I swear there's nothing these people can do that will please the IWC. But anyway. I like both of these guys. I've really gotten into them. Um, Gunner, I still think they gotta start using a first name. Gunner's not a good doesn't isn't a good sounding one word uh, one word name. I still say use his real first name, which is Chad Chad Gunner. I think it works. Uh, I, I like both guys. I think both guys have been built pretty well. Crimson being more of a strong, silent type. He's gotten some really big victories. He's beaten some top guys: Samoa Joe, Matt Hardy, Abyss. And his undefeated streak is works well. Undefeated streaks tend to work very well with a lot of people. Uh, Gunner, been kicking butt. Uh, he's pinned two world champions in back-to-back -back weeks and a former world champion this week in AJ Styles. Probably another one that I'm forgetting. But, you know, I think the only mistake that's been made is that they had Gunner lose that TV title to Eric Young. I don't know why they put that TV title on Eric Young. He's just kind of be, being a joke with it when they can really be doing something good with it. I really think Gunner needs to get that TV title back and really, really go strong with it. Some really good strong wins, some strong title defense, defenses over a lot of guys, and have him keep looking good. I think Crimson needs to continue going undefeated, not be pinned or made to submit. You know, they, uh, they're they actually the top two in the Bound for Glory series so far, and I hope it stays that way. I really think both the guys should be in the Final Four. You know, the Final Four is, will be a four-way match at No Surrender, and the winner of that match gets the main event world title shot at Bound for Glory. I don't think either guy should win it. <coughs> Excuse me. But I do think they should be two of the Final Four. I actually think that AJ Styles should win the whole thing. I think AJ Styles versus Anderson as the main event of Bound for Glory would be pretty good. Um... Who the fourth guy would be, I don't haven't really thought much about that. And for the sake of this argument, it really doesn't matter. I think I might have mentioned who I wanted the final four to be in, a, in another video, but I can't recall who it was right now. 
But AJ should pin the other guy. Neither Gunner nor Crimson should be pinned in the Fatal 4-Way match. But AJ should win and go on to Bound for Glory. I think Gunner coming into that match as the television champion makes him has, has him a, makes him a very strong favorite. Um, especially if he keeps getting wins like he's been doing. You know, Crimson coming in still undefeated is great for him. And I think those two going one-on-one -on -one for the TV title at Bound for Glory would be great. Two up-and-comers, two fresh-faced new guys that TNA's pushed for most, for pretty much a whole year. You know, I think you know Gunner has been around since uh, late last year. Crimson showed up at around what February or March, whenever that Jeff Jarrett MMA thing was, which I missed. That was fun. I like the double J double M A challenge. Anyway, but and you can you know chronicle their whole year, all the the the, the current champions and f the current world champions that Gunner has beaten. He's beaten two current world champions. He's beaten a former world champion. He should probably get another couple wins over some over another couple uh, former champions. You can just chronicle a who's who's list. As guys Gunner has beaten this year, you also can chronicle Crimson with what well, we also with Gunner the fact that he's still the reigning television champion, um, which he needs to get back. Crimson being undefeated, you know, both got to be built up very well. You talk about how they were led the leaderboard throughout the Bound for Glory series. Both guys came so close. <clears throat> Excuse me, I made cupcakes earlier. They good too. Anyway, how both guys came really close to winning the Bound for Glory series. How both have been impressive the whole year. And now at Bound for Glory, they're going to meet one on one for the TV title. Um, I think Crimson should come out with that belt, probably. And keep going strong. But you'll spend all this time building up Gunner so he won't be so hurt. And then you could probably, uh, middle of next year, you could start. Well, early next year, you can really start moving Gunner uh, closer to the world title. Have him have some more top, upper, 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 high, mid-card fuse, and then ease him into the main event picture. Then after Crimson finally either has his first loss or wins the world title, he can he can be one of those, you know, it's been a while since we had a guy win the world title while he held a secondary belt. I mean, I don't know if you want to go that far with him, but if he gets over big enough, Maybe midway next year, say AJ beats Anderson at Bound for Glory for the world title, they can meet lockdown. Maybe next year, Slam Reversary, champion versus champion. I think that could be pretty good. But again, I like both of these guys. I like that TNA has finally found two guys that they really believe in and really, really want to get behind and say these are going to be two of our new guys that we're going to push. These two guys are going to be the future of TNA. At least I think that's where they're going. I hope neither guy screws up or TNA doesn't just suddenly decide to drop the ball. Because you know what it tends to happen a lot, and it's something. Even a, even a big TNA fan like myself, I have to admit, a lot of times what will happen is they really start getting beside, behind some of their homegrown talent or some newer guys that we don't know about, and then somebody gets released from WWE and they decide, well, we got to get him and grab him and push him up really, really quick. I, I kind of fear that might happen. That, you know, like, like you know, what if CM Punk really does leave WWE and TNA's like, get him, 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 get him and then they have him then they job Crimson out to him and ended the undefeated streak and job out Gunner to him just to grab CM Punk right up on the upper mid card really quick. I hope that they don't sacrifice these two guys on some ex WWE guy because they've done that in the past, you know. I, I hope they don't do that. I hope they really run with these two strong and build them up good and don't just waste them to get some ex WWE guy out because like they've done in the past, you know. Kind of like when Samoa Joe was undefeated and they threw his streak out the Kurt Angle. Angle beat him on, into his streak on the first try. I always thought that was a really, really big mistake that TNA made. You know, because they didn't take the time to reestablish Kurt Angle as a TNA guy. People still saw him as a WWE guy. You know, now, when I look at Kurt Angle, I think TNA. I think of his TNA theme music. When I look at Kurt Angle, I don't think the, the, the Kurt Angle, the... I don't think that music anymore. When I see Kurt Angle today, I think TNA first. I think WWE second. At that time, everybody still thought WWE. And it just kind of sent the message that the WWE guys were better. 
than TNA guys. You know, this guy go, runs through the entire TNA roster, then one, a WWE guy shows up and beat ends his streak on the first try. I always thought that was a big mistake that TNA did. I'm, I'm hoping nothing like that happens with Gunner or Crimson. I like both guys. I think both guys have a great look. I think they're talented. You know, we don't hear a lot of them on the mic, so I kind of want to see where we go with that later. But I think these two could be really good guys for this company in the future. Going into the late end of this year and next year. And really do some good stuff. Um, I also got some questions sent to me from WWE TNA ROH guy. He sent me uh, six questions. So I'm going to read those and get some answers on them. <coughs> Let me check my time first. Alright, I'm only at 10 minutes. I'm good. Okay. Um, now, the first two questions were about uh, CM Punk and the promo he did. The question, first question he asked me, what I think of CM Punk actions on Raw, and do I agree or disagree with him? And then he asked, do I, do I think he deserved the punishment he got for what he did? Um, it's kind of hard for me to say because, I mean, it's a work. I mean, it was a, what they call the work shoot, you know. It was a fun promo, you know. I don't, let me see. It saved what was otherwise a boring Raw. I mean, was there anything else that happened on Monday Night Raw that was of note worthy? No, the rest of that show sucked. It was boring, but that promo was the only thing that was interesting. Um, it was cool to listen to. I listened to it like probably five or six times. It was great. But it was to the work shoot. WWE does it. You don't shoot on Monday Night Raw. Nobody does a shoot on Monday Night Raw. Sorry. WWE has been in this business way too long. They're way too professional. They don't let crap like that happen. That 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 mic would have been cut so fast. If he if he said everything that CM Punk said was pre-approved. Pre-approved. Alright. He threw stuff in. Don't think for a second that he wasn't pre-approved. Cause they, I cause guarantee you, when somebody, if they even hit, think that somebody might attempt to shoot, they got the dude on the on the button ready to kill the mic at a moment's notice. Nothing. Punk would have been cut. Mike would have been cut immediately if he said anything that wasn't pre-approved. But the promo was great. It got a lot of people talking. And, you know, you wonder what they're going to do with it. You know, I, I, I don't want people to get their hopes up too much. Because WWE has done great angles and screwed them up in the past. Let's not forget, this time last year, we were all raving about the Nexus. Remember that? This time last year? Oh my god, that Nexus, that angle was so great. And Nexus, and it's reviving, and it's, it's reviving this company, and it's great. And you know, see how that turned out. I mean... I mean, not matching WWE. Lot every company has screwed up a good angle before, even WWE. And you know, I, let's just hope they don't screw this up. Um, where I'd like to see this go, I hope that they have re-signed Punk. And what I would do is do whatever I have to do to re-sign Punk. I heard the whole thing is they want to own the rights to the CM Punk name. Let him keep his name. Keep him. What I would do. Because I haven't really seen an angle like this done in a really, really, really long time. Have Pump beat Cena at Money in the Bank. And then just take him off TV and say he left. He's he's left. Have him win the belt, run out the building, you know, just in case they thought the person with Money in the Bank was going to try to cash in on him. Have him leave, jump in the car, drive off, like, I got the belt, sayonara suckers, and, you know, he's gone. You re-sign him, for real, and just have him off TV for a while, like six, seven months. You have McMahon come on Raw the next night and say, CM Punk's contract expired, he is no longer part of the WWE, and therefore he is no longer the WWE Champion. We're going to have a tournament to crown a new champion, and which will culminate at SummerSlam. So that's your hook for SummerSlam, the finals of the tournament. You could have, you could, you know, have a lot of the tournament matches take place at SummerSlam, so, you know... The guy has to, to say that who wins has to win like two or three matches in one night. I'd probably have it be Cena and Del Rio possibly in the finals, but whoever you want to go with. 
Um, have that person win. There's a new WWE champion. You have a brand new belt design. Not no spinner belt anymore. New belt design. Give him that belt. Got a new champion. Six from, months from now, when Punk's all rested up and ready to, ready to go, you bring him back with the spinner belt. I'm the real world champion. I'm the real WWE champion. I won this title. Nobody ever beat it for me. I'm the real champion. Yeah, you know, Punk talking about how he's the real champion. And... Whoever the, the, the WWE champion is, him and Punk can have a feud. Uh, who's the real champion and have that to have that title match? That's probably that's where I'd go with it. <laughs> um. So that's pretty much my thoughts on the Punk promo. Uh, that's that took care of questions one and two. I just answered those together. Uh, third question he asked was what I thought about Chavo Guerrero being released from WWE. I talked about this in my last video, but uh, just to add to it, you know, he wasn't happy, so we left. You can't really hate on a guy for that. Personally, I think his best bet is to go to Mexico, Puerto Rico, some, you know, uh, Latino country where, you know, just because he's a Guerrero, you can get over on that. That'll give him some good paydays. You know, he can make a really good living working in the Indies for a while. You know, he could go to Ring of Iron because, as we've learned this week, you're only a WWE reject if you go to TNA. Plus, I don't think it would do him any good to go to TNA because I think they're going to treat him the same way he was getting treated in WWE. He said that he just felt like he was being underutilized and he felt like he didn't like seeing guys that he that were worse than him getting pushed above him. And, I, you know, WWE just didn't see him as a top-level talent. I don't see him as a top-level talent, and I don't think anyone in TNA will see him as a top-level talent. I think if Chavo went to TNA, he'd be doing the same thing he's doing in W. He was doing in WWE. Well, you know, except for losing to a leprechaun. But his spot-wise, his position on the card would be the same. He would be doing the same thing for less money, less, 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 less travel. Though, you know, that could be it. But in TNA, he'd be doing the same thing for less money. Um, Ring of Honor, he can really showcase his wrestling skills. You know, I think that group would be much more accepting of him. Um, I think there's plenty of indie promotion. You know, like I said, indies, plenty of indie. I can, you know, any indie promotion would be glad to have Chavo show up. But you know, best of luck to Chavo. You wasn't happy, he left. That's, you know, that's what he did. All right. Uh, question number four. By the way, WWE TNA RH guy. These are some very good questions. You saying good questions? Say more. Uh, question number four. He asked, "What free agent wrestlers would you like to see go to TNA, and what wrestlers would you like to see go to WWE?" Um, for WWE, none really. All the indie wrestlers that I like, I'd rather see in TNA. So as far as indie wrestlers going to WWE, there aren't any. TNA though, uh, I'd love to see Scrap Iron Adam Pierce. I actually have, I'm gonna talk about him in a, him coming to TNA in a future episode of After Immortal. It'll probably be the next one, uh, but I haven't got it completely ready. I haven't thought it out completely of how I want to, what, what I want to do with it. But that'll probably be the next episode of After Immortal. Uh, a few with Adam Pierce coming to TNA. I really like Scrap Iron. You know, I learned this week that his health issue has been taken care of and he's coming back but he's decided he's gonna you know start winding down his career I would like for him to have a have at least one good run in TNA before he retires you know I just feel bad that I only recently discovered this this guy and now he's getting he's about to call a career like man I want to find his old stuff cuz this dude is awesome and I asked like how is he not in WWE how is he not in TNA what is going on when somebody this great, this talented has not been picked up? This dude is fucking awesome. Man, go to the NWA Hollywood site, watch some past episodes. Scrap Iron Adam Pierce is fantastic. I, I, I said before, I could sit here for an hour and talk about how great this dude is. And I, I, I'm shocked by the fact that he's not in TNA. I'm shocked that he's not in WWE. I don't get it. But, you know, got number one. If they said, if Dixie Carter said Troy name an indie guy and I'll give him a contract, no questions asked. Adam Pierce, no questions, the guy I pick. Hire him. And what we do with him, like I said, that's going to be in a future episode of After Immortal. 
Also, uh, other people I like to see come to TNA, the Rottenest Monsters. I really like them. Um, most of these guys are going to be from NW Hollywood. Uh, Natural Selection, that's a great team I like to see. Buggy, love Buggy. Um, Willie Mack, I think he'd be a great addition to the X Division. Um, from Chikara, a group I've seen Chikara, the Soul Touches. I talked about them in After Immortal before. I like to see, um, uh, Acid Jad, Marche Rocket, and Willie the Bomb Richardson in TNA. I think they would do some really good stuff there. I think Rottenness Monsters versus the Motor City Machine Guns would be a really fun match. I'm not really, you know, again, I'm usually not into the big spot fest, but that's one I'd like. <laughs> um, let's see, question number five, he says, What wrestlers do you think should be released from WWE, and what wrestlers do you think should be released from TNA? Man, this is a little different. The only guys I really think should be released are really two categories. One, guys that the company really doesn't plan to ever really use. You know, I feel like if you know you're not going to really do anything big with a guy. You know you're not going to give him any real fuse or storylines. You don't want to do anything with him. Then just release the guy and stop wasting his time. If you're not going to do something with him, maybe let him go find somebody who will give him a shot to do something. You know, that's kind of how I feel about this Zack Ryder thing, man. You know, WWE, apparently they're not, I, I don't know, it just seems like they're not going to give him the shot that he's looking for. He's trying to get attention, he's doing what he can, he wants a shot. I think the guy is fun, I think he's a good wrestler, I think he has talent and could do something great. I don't think he could be his main event talent or anything, but he could be a very good mid-card guy. You know, good Intercontinental Champion, good U.S. Champion. He could be in TNA and be a good TV Champion there. I don't ever see him as main event. But the guy has talent. He has charisma. He has good look. And he's just trying to get a shot. And it don't look like they're ever going to give him one. So, you know, I, I don't want WWE to just keep Zack right around to mess around with him and rib him and make fun of him and waste his time. And, you know, if they really not going to give him the shot that he's looking for, release him and maybe somebody else will give him the shot. You know, if he gets the shot and he fails, then hey, you gave him the shot and it happened. But if you, uh, I just think it's kind of messed up that W is going to keep would keep the guy around. They're not going to give him the shot that he's looking for. If he fails, he fails, and you can say, hey, we gave you the shot, you didn't get it done, you failed. But if they're not going to give him the shot, release the dude. Let him go try out, take a shot in Ring of Honor to see if they'll give him the shot. Let him try his luck in TNA. Maybe they'll give him the shot. I just don't like dudes time being don't waste people's time. You can't wrestle forever. You know, I like yeah, there's older guys that can still put on an entertaining match. Sting, I still love Sting, I think Sting's still great, Ric Flair and stuff, but you know. You don't borrow time. You know, Sting's not gonna be wrestling ten years from now. Ric Flair's not gonna be wrestling ten years from now. You know, you only have so much time in your prime and don't waste dudes time. So I say fire a guy that you're not gonna use to do anything with. It happens. Talent-wise, th there's no one in either company that I would fire because of any lack of ability. There's nobody I look at and say, he doesn't have the talent, he doesn't have the ability, so fire him. On that level, there's no one that I would fire. Um, there's a lot of guys that I would, I think should be used differently. Really... You know, the, the only other group of guys that I personally would fire is guy, people who don't want to be there. If you don't want to be in my company, go. Leave. Don't waste my time. I want people who want to be here. I can fire you and find somebody who wants to be here and let them go. You know, people always, I always hear people complain about how, you know, why did they let this guy go? Why did they let him leave? You should have done whatever you can to keep him. No, he don't want to be here. You know, you know, low key recently came back to TNA. He left TNA a couple years ago because he didn't want to be there. So he left. You know, Homicide's not TNA anymore. Homicide left because he didn't want to be there. Chavo Guerrero just left the WWE because he didn't want to be there. If a dude don't want to be there, he's not going to give it all, give you his all. A guy who doesn't want to be there is not giving you 100%. And you and you need guys giving you 100%. In, in the wrestling world today, with wrestling being on a downturn like it is, 
you can't afford to have guys half-assing. And when you don't want to be there, you half-ass. A person who don't want to be there, don't give it all. I, you need people, WWE, and especially TNA, especially even more, especially ROH right now, they need people who are dedicated. They need people in their company that want to be in their company. They need people who are going to give them 110% every time they go out there. If, Ring of, if TNA is going to go bigger, if Ring of Honor is going to get bigger, they need people who are down for the cause and are going to be giving it their all. And people who don't want to be there, don't give it their all. So th that's why I hate when people say that. You know, I heard somebody talking about CM Punk or else, you know, saying about, you know, he was in TNA and they let him go. No, they didn't let him go. He chose to leave. You all know the story about Rob Feinstein getting caught in the, in the catch a predator type sting, and you know TNA said, "All right, look, we breaking ties, with Ring of Honor into this this controversy." And there was a group of guys there that were working with TNA and Ring of Honor, and TNA said, "Look, if you're gonna work for us, you can't work with Ring of Honor. You got a choice to make." You know, Punk got was given that choice. AJ was given that choice. Christopher Daniels was given that choice. I think Samoa Joe was given that choice too. Punk shows ROH. The other guy shows TNA. It happened. Punk decided he didn't want to be in TNA, so he left. You can't, it don't do you no good to throw everything at a guy who don't want to be there. Because then you're just going to be paying a guy to half-ass. So, that's the one group I fire. Anybody on the roster that don't want to be there, leave. Get your release and go. There's other guys out there. There's plenty of wrestlers out there. I'll find some that do want to be here. Um, also, people who show gross unprofessionalism. Like the Hardys. I'm not a huge fan of Hardys, but I don't deny their talent. I don't deny their ability. But they got issues. They got personal problems that caused them to be unprofessional. You know? We all recall the Victory Road incident. I would have fired Jeff Hardy after that. Now, TNA just suspended him. They suspended him. You know, personally, though, I don't think he's been missed. Has anybody actually missed Jeff Hardy since he's been going? Is there any of you been watching TNA and thinking this is good, but it would be so much better if Jeff Hardy was here? That just as a side note, but you know, I heard this week that they're ordering him to go to rehab. That basically they're giving him say, "Hey, rehab, or you fired." I think that's good if he can get himself straightened up. I've said before, I'll say it again: a clean and sober Jeff Hardy is an asset to any promotion, uh, any promotion would be lucky to have Jeff Hardy when Jeff Hardy has his head on straight and his shit together it's, there's nothing wrong with Jeff the worker it's just personal problems that screw him up after that Victor Road incident I probably would have fired Jeff Hardy I don't I think it would have taken a lot of people to convince me to just suspend him I would have fired him the next day I would have told him right now, hey, don't bother showing up, you done. I, I, you know, because you can't have something like that happen uh, twice. But maybe he comes back with his head on straight, and there's plenty you can do with him. Uh, you know, Matt, Matt got suspended. Apparently, he's been showing up late for shows and stuff. And then he goes on Twitter and basically suggesting that fans at the live events, at the house show, should ask for refunds because he's not there. That's pretty fucked up that you would do. I'd probably fire them just for being grossly unprofessional. That's what makes me fire a person. You don't want to be there. You're unprofessional. That's what makes me fire you. Everybody else, I will probably let's see what we can fit you. Where can we go with do with you that's gonna work? You know, I would even fire. You know, I wouldn't even fire Rob Terry. I, I wouldn't. I would just use him to let's figure out what we can do with Rob. Can we help this guy improve? Because he's not really bad on the mic. He's got a great look. The guy looks like a million bucks. He looks like a, like he should be in the main event of WrestleMania. But he's just really bad in the ring. Put him with people to train him. I find it odd that you got Sting. You got Ric Flair. You can't get some of those guys to work in, with him and help him get to passable. He ain't got to be great. He ain't got to wrestle like AJ. Just have him be able to put on a good match. And you can do stuff with the guy. Work with him, man. I'm, I'm going to work with it, guy. Let's see what we can do with him. I mean, I don't. I, I like Rob Terry. I think there's stuff he can do. You just got to figure out where does he fit. Where can we put him to do something productive on this show? 
Now, if Rob got bad attitude, start being unprofessional, don't want to be there, then we release him. That's how I feel about the whole thing. Um, and the last question he asked was, do you think TNA should bring back the six-sided ring for good instead of just one night? Um, no. I'm used to the four-sided ring now. I mean, they had the six-sided ring. I never really noticed the difference. I, I really never cared. Um, but it's something special you could add to the Destination X pay-per-view every year if you're going to keep doing the, the Destination X all X Division pay-per-view. Besides, I, I, I've said before, it doesn't matter if it's four sides or six sides. If it's good in a four-sided ring, it's good in a six-sided ring. If it's bad in a six-sided ring, it's bad in a four-sided ring. Four sides or six sides, man. Red's still amazing, AJ's still phenomenal, and Anderson's still an asshole. I don't get the point. I said this before, I'll say it again. Nobody has started or stopped watching TNA because they changed the ring. I challenge you to find me one. I challenge you to find me one person who said, you know, I like TNA, I like the wrestlers, I like the storylines, I like the matches, but I refuse to watch wrestling in a six-sided ring. When they change back to a four-sided ring, then I'll watch. And by the same token, there was nobody going, I love TNA, but I just can't watch it now that it's in a four-sided ring. It's great, but I, re I won't watch until the six-sided ring comes back. Nobody, it, no, the ring ain't selling tickets. Nobody started or stopped watching TNA because they changed the ring. And no one's going to start or stop watching if they change it back. So, really, it doesn't matter. Alright. I've been talking for 31 minutes and 43 seconds. So, let me go ahead and wrap this video up. This has been a long one, so I appreciate it if you listen to it. Uh, WWE TNA ROH guy, thank you for the questions. Feel free to send more. Um, again, leave me feedback on the sound quality because I'm trying a new mic. I got a new mic. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say about this video. So, um, this is the Shadow Ranger. If you like my videos, please subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at TJSMITH3. So if you have questions or topics that you'd like me to talk about in the video, uh, send me a message on YouTube. And have a nice day.